and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are most welcome on this fourth Sunday of Eastertide, um, watching from your homes or wherever you're watching, to join us in our home as we offer this parish Eucharist to the glory of God and for all the people of our parish at these uh, difficult and bewildering times. And it's been wonderful that our Eucharist this morning has begun um, with the playing on the organ of Ronnie Krippner, our Director of Music, and we will also have a, what he's calling a virtual voluntary at the end of the Mass too. As we prepare to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us call to mind and confess our sins, confident that Christ, the Good Shepherd, forgives us and will lead us into good new pasture. Almighty God, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen let us pray almighty god whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life. Raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many were baptised and were added to the community. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon them, because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together, and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods, and distribute the proceedings to all, the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God for having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The response to the psalm is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. 
He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not be in want. reading from the first letter of Peter. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Brothers and sisters, it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called. Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The image of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, is one that many people hold very dear. And the words of Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd, are particularly precious ones to many people in our churches and indeed beyond. Today is often known as Good Shepherd Sunday because of the Gospel reading of the day, 
and is associated too with prayer for vocations to the priesthood, because each priest is charged by the bishop at ordination with these powerful, inspiring and humbling words, keep the example of the Good Shepherd always before you. That is the charge to the priest of pastoral care. And the ordination rite is peppered with shepherding images. I know some people find the imagery of the priest or bishop as shepherd to be unhelpful or even patronising because of the inference that they, as part of the flock, are somehow dumb, bleating, stupid creatures like sheep. It's worth noting though that the word congregation comes from the Latin con, meaning together, with, and gregis or grex, meaning flock. We come together as a flock, even if sometimes we have dumb, bleating or stupid shepherds at the head of the flock. The image of the shepherd and the flock is an image that Jesus uses liberally, including charging St Peter with the care of the flock after his resurrection, saying, feed my sheep. And in our second reading, the church is likened to the flock, for you were going astray like sheep. Pastoral care, then, is something bishops and priests are particularly charged with. Bishops carry a shepherd's crook, after all. But pastoral care and contact within the body of Christ, the flock, is also the responsibility of everyone. And I hope that you're using this lockdown time to keep in touch with those people you know from church, encouraging them in endurance, in faith and in hope. Pastoral care is about being connected in the body of Christ. And the role of the shepherd within that is very often to show compassion, sometimes to show direction, and occasionally it's about nudging or cajoling the stubborn onwards to good pastures. Sometimes it is about making huge sacrifices for the flock after the example of the good shepherd not like the hired hand, but as a priest, passionate about the safety and well-being of his flock, as today's Gospel implies. The first letter of Peter, our second reading, speaks of the flock going astray. Flocks go astray when individuals are cut off in some way, and each go their own way. And don't we know that feeling now? The flock is dispersed, the church. We can't come together with one another. We are like sheep, scattered across hills and valleys, across our town, not able to be in the sheepfold of our temple, our church. Yet Peter also speaks of the scattered flock returning to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The return to the shepherd and guardian of our souls is the promise held out that the flock will congregate again and will be able to know the promise of the good shepherd. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. What a promise. In times where our lives are impaired and limited because we can't congregate, the promise of fullness of life, abundant life, is one for which we yearn, hanker, desire and long. And this is the great gift of Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd. That deeply loved psalm is like a compass that will guide us on the path to abundance of life. It narrates for us our predicament, sets the bearings of our route out of all of this and sets our sights on the destination. Of course the opening line 
causes some confusion and has done for generations. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. It can all too easily be interpreted as, I don't want the Lord as my shepherd. When of course it means, because the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I can lack. Nothing I'll be in want for. That itself is a powerful message of assurance at this time. I shall not be in want because the Good Shepherd leads me to rest in green pastures, leads me on my journey beside still rather than turbulent waters. One paraphrase of the Bible renders it like this, God my shepherd I don't need a thing, you have bedded me down in lush meadows, you find me quiet pools to drink from. Well, that's all very well at the moment, as we're locked down, locked in and socially, socially isolated. I can't go into a park, whether lush meadow or not, and lie down. And if I wander around the still waters at Wadden Ponds for more than an hour, I'll be moved on. But there's something deeper going on here. He revives my soul. At the moment... Many people know the feeling of their souls being heavy and downcast. And the words of another psalm, Psalm 42, ring very true. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? Why are you so disquieted within me? Our souls need reviving. Like a dry and thirsty land where there is no water, as another psalm puts it. Reviving literally means bringing back to life. And there's a huge flag waving for us. This is about resurrection. Christians are people brought back to life through the silent pools of the water of baptism, where souls are revived and reborn and renewed. And here is the compass for we thirsty travellers. He guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. This is the job of the shepherd, with the shepherd's trusty staff bringing strength and protection. Even walking through the valley of the shadow of death, evil is no longer to be feared, not viruses, not nothing. Perfect love casts out fear, Perfect love is abundant life, and fear has no hold or place there. And then as the psalm draws to its conclusion, the destination is in sight. Not for the Christian light at the end of some tunnel, for we always walk as children of light. With the light of the risen Lord represented in this paschal candle of Easter, illuminating our way. Paul writes, for once you were children of darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. The destination and fulfilment of the promise of life, as articulated in Psalm 23 and in our Gospel, is found at a table, the table of the Lord. Here is the anointing, healing love of the Good Shepherd. Here is a cup poured to overflowing. This is the abundant life of Christ, the bread of life, Christ, the true vine. Psalm 63 says, So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and glory. That is our yearning to be in God's holy place, our own church, not simply being in a magnificent building, not simply to enjoy fellowship with one another, not simply to enjoy the splendours of our choral tradition, but to be in our holy place, our place of encounter, where the Good Shepherd becomes for us again the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We yearn gather together at that table, our altar, once again. 
for it is where abundant life and hope is brought to us and points to a deeper hope beyond, the table of the banquet of heaven, that we might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. O God, our sovereign and shepherd, who brought again your Son, Jesus Christ, from the valley of death, comfort us with your protecting presence and your angels of goodness and love that we may also come home and dwell with him in your house forever. Amen. So now let us proclaim our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you on the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your light. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy hear us, accept our prayers, and be with us always. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, 
God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care you spread before us the table of life, and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Together with Christopher, our bishop, Jonathan, Bishop of Croydon, and all pastors who minister in your name. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
St John the Baptist, St George, St Andrew, the holy apostles and martyrs and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I only say the word, and I shall be healed. I came that you may have life, says the Lord, and have it abundantly. Alleluia. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and, and also, also with you, the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.